Welcome to Kayla Johnson. <laughs> Miss Kayla is joining me today for this episode of Flow with the Grow. Are you excited? Yes. Nervous? Yes. Both. <laughs> So Kayla is a client of mine. She started with me. When did we start? Do you remember? What year was that? 2019 I started personal training. Okay. So 2019. Yeah. Because it was 20. Well, you joined 2018, 2018 in December and then 2019 was, like, was when we started one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's when we started one-on-one -on -one, and then eventually over time, we transitioned to a small group training and large group training, and then you did that as well. Mm -hmm. And then we've come to a point where you, like, you've learned a lot, and we will get to that. You have learned a shit ton. It's like, and it's crazy, just like the transformation from like when you first started to where you are now. I wish I had a folder of all the videos I made uh, on Snapchat. I'm sure I could find it because I could just scroll right back, like all the way back. But seriously, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Just like take a day to try and do that because it's just phenomenal what you like. There's just the changes. Like you wouldn't even know. Mm -hmm. If someone watches you in the gym, they would think that, oh, she's been working out her whole life. She knows what she's doing. Good form. You know, unless we need, you need clarification on stuff. But like, it's just crazy. It is. Really crazy. It's insane. <laughs> so, so yeah, so she, so then once I left Anytime Fitness, you kept doing it, fulfilled your contract. And then... I think honestly, because I've thought about this, even if I was there, I would have even encouraged you to either do less of our trainings or completely on your own mm -hmm. um, or like just small group and I would write you the workouts because you were getting to a point where you're going every single day. And when someone goes every single day, it is more beneficial to do more of like those split workouts versus full body five, six days out of the week. So, so once I left, you fulfilled your contract and then um, we've gone back to um, more like split based workouts and training for Spartan. Yep. So okay, that's kind of like my focus for you right now is like getting ready for that. Mm -hmm. um, but first, how about you tell us, uh, so you're Kayla Johnson, tell us what you do. Um, just a little bit about you. Okay. I work out at, work at Dectronics in the EA area. What's EA? Electric assembly. Oh, okay which I make the boards that go into the scoreboards and display boards that you see around. So what do you just like, is it a machine you run or do you, put, you like physically put pieces on this board? The machine does it all for us. Okay, but you're, you're just like running the machines. Yep. Gotcha, okay. How long have you worked there for? 10 years. 10 years. <laughs> you grew up where, Brookings? Brookings. And then after high school, do you just go right to DAC? I went a year at Minnesota West okay. College, Community College, mm -hmm. for child development. Oh, I did not know that, I don't think. You did? You did I, <laughs> no. Yeah, okay. No. Because did you have any idea what you wanted to do with that, or you just went for that? No, I like being with kids before. Oh, well, I still Yeah, we do, talked about that. But. Talked about yeah. that. Daycare mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I like being with kids, but I just didn't like the college. Okay, yeah, so you quit, yeah. and then found DAC. Yeah, been working there ever since. Yeah. <laughs> and you are currently doing what? Uh, doing personal training class, yes, NASM. Yeah, NASM certification, which is, like, super cool. This is, like, a full circle moment here. Not only are you, like, we're on this podcast, you're talking about your journey from when you first started to where you are now, but also you are getting certified to be a trainer you because you never really knew exactly what you wanted to do but you were at like your chiropractor I think and you guys were talking he's like why don't you do something within health and fitness mm -hmm. and um yeah when you told me that I was like oh yeah duh, that's never occurred to me but like you love doing that and something new something different so yeah so it's very cool yep. and no plans yet after you <laughs> no, first yet. <laughs> goal is to pass, pass it yes, yes. So let's rewind back to 2018. I'm going to just tell my viewpoint of it and then you tell me yours. But because um, my question is going to be, what made you decide to join a gym? And were you looking at different gyms or what made you join Anytime Fitness? But I remember when your sister, Stephanie, came in. She, I was the one that signed him up, I think, because I think Heather was out of her office for a bit, so I signed her and her fiancé at the time up for membership, and she's like, I think Heather came in, like, a little bit after, I don't know, it doesn't matter, so 
I signed them up and Stephanie asked me, well, my sister wants to sign up, but she's at work and uh, can't come in until later or like you were going to not be around or maybe that was a lie because yeah, you didn't no. want to come in. <laughs> it was true. It was true. Okay. It was true. <laughs> So, something like that. yeah, so I was like, yeah, we can absolutely do that. Heather can give her a call. Like, you can do it over the phone. I don't remember exactly, like, what happened with that, but I think I did it over the phone. Yeah, I did it over the phone. Yeah. yeah, and I remember, like, we did just, like, a black picture. Like, we didn't, we were going to update it at some point and it never did, <laughs> but that's how your membership got set up, and then I didn't meet with you, but your sister met with me. We talked about, um, like, obviously her goals and then training. I think I gave them a couple classes to try. And then I don't remember if she said that you would be interested or no, I think I, cause I always reached out to new members anyways. So I think I reached out to you and then you were, you like, were just open to meeting to talk about your goals and stuff. And then you were very shy. And uh, I think I taught, we talked about one-on-one -on -one because of just how much, because just of how new you were like this, that was literally the starting point. You knew nothing prior to Anytime Fitness. Um, we'll talk about that, but yeah, and so then um, you waited a little bit, thought about it, and then messaged me, and you said yes, but what was your experience of first, that first question I asked, why did you join anytime, and were you looking at other gyms before that? Uh, I was not looking at any gyms before that, I know that okay. for sure. So why, why anytime fitness, or just like why a gym, why join a gym? <laughs> well, okay, I always wanted to join a gym after I got done with high school. Or, like, after that or whatnot. Okay. And mm -hmm. then, but I was too scared to decide which one to do or how to start it. And then, Too scared? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know, like, how to start the whole process. What was scary about it? Because I'm just so shy. I was so shy. Okay. Yeah. Just, like, knowing. was it, like, Played talking to people? Yeah. And then, had you ever been in a gym before that? No. Okay. So, Never just, was. like, it was intimidating. It was scary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Continue. And then I got the opportunity when my sister and now husband decided to sign up at yeah. Anytime Fitness. So they told you that they were going to sign up and then you're like, okay, I'll, I'll do that. I'll yeah. try it. Okay. Yeah. So that was like your easy way in yeah. <laughs> That's my easy way at the time in. to like get a membership. Yes. Okay. Um, got it. Did you go to the gym at all before I messaged you? Okay. Yeah. What was your experience? Gym. And like, how did you feel walking into the gym by yourself the first time before we met? Tell us about that. Well, I walked in with my sister all the time. Like, okay, so you just went with them. Yeah, yeah okay. Mm -hmm. But then um, I was still, like, nervous, and the only thing I would do is, like, walk on the treadmill. Okay. Or they went, I would just <laughs> not come at all. Nova. <laughs> okay. Nova, our pup, almost uh, stepped on the, tripped on the cord. <laughs> the light almost fell. It was almost not good, but okay. Right. So you walked with them, walked in with them. And you would just walk on the bike. I mean, <laughs> the treadmill. Walk on a bike. <laughs> walk on the treadmill. Yep. And um, that's it. Yeah. Or I would just not show up. Or all. just not show up. Yeah. What were your feelings? Like, when you walked into the gym, like, emotion, emotions and just, like, headspace, even though you went with your sister, what were you feeling? I don't know. I have no idea. Just, like, scared? Yeah, scared. Or was it just kind of, was it a lot easier because you were with your sister? Well, they would do their own workout mm -hmm. every time. So then I would just quickly hop on a machine and just and just do that. Because they would tell they're done yeah. and walk out. Because I didn't know anything okay. safe and I didn't know anything about working out. Okay. So you didn't know anything. No. You didn't know what to do. No. You were lost, but you like you took that step to go to the gym anyways. Mm -hmm. Why did you so you said after high school you wanted to get a gym, but yeah. like why? Well, because when I was younger, I was in sports and whatnot. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then then I got working at DAC and I always would just go to bed, wake up, work out, go to work and then eat and then watch TV and go to bed. So I thought I needed to do something else with my life. Okay. Besides That's a very positive outlet. Thing. So then I did the gym. Okay. So, yep. Was there any other specific goals that you had or was it more of just like you wanted to do something else with your life in the day versus just the same thing? Yeah. Just something new. Okay. So you were, didn't know what to do. And then I reached out to you. Mm -hmm. And so how did it feel having someone reach out to you, be like, Hey, let's meet, talk about your goals, whatever. How did that feel? It was nice for someone to meet, like take the time to like talk to me about it. Mm -hmm. 
but I was like nervous at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> so you were nervous, you were scared, but it was nice that someone reached out to you. You appreciated that. You felt like it was, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Not like easy, but like, uh, like you felt like someone maybe like cared about what you were going to be doing at the gym mm-hmm. and yeah. Yeah. And then what made you say yes to meeting with me, even though you were scared? And maybe you don't have an answer. Maybe you just, you just did it just because it was, it mattered more that someone reached out to you and you didn't know what to do. So it was a, kind of an opportunity to be able to I think it was the best option for me at that point, since I mm-hmm. really wanted to like join the gym, mm-hmm. the gym. So I knew it was like the best option to get the one-on-one mm-hmm. training. But before we did one-on-one, when I first oh. messaged you about meeting with me, just talk about like your goals and get a plan. You were scared to do that, but you said yes to meeting with me anyways. Yeah. Do you remember why you said yes? Or was it just like something you felt like you had to do? Just something to do. Yeah. Just get info on it. Yeah. To do some. Okay. So then we met, talked about stuff, um, your goals. We did like maybe a little workout. And I remember from my viewpoint, like you, you truly, you didn't know how to hip hinge, didn't know how to squat, didn't like, didn't know any movement patterns whatsoever at all but it's like a great testimony like there's so many people out there that are like you didn't know what to do at all nothing it's so common though so this is why it's so important to get guidance especially in the beginning so you're not spinning your wheels over and over not knowing what to do and um so I saw that and I could tell that you were shy it was kind of I think we even talked about how like it was intimidating the gym was a little bit you didn't know what to do mm-hmm. and uh, I think I don't remember exactly what we did in our session probably like just the basic like showing you how to squat maybe we worked on hip hinge a little bit but for me it was like I truly thought and believed that you needed training Mm -hmm. one-on-one and then so I told you all about it you probably said you had to think about it and then I remember you messaged me a little bit a couple days later or whatever just saying would it be with you yeah would it be with someone else um so did you feel okay so now when you met with me not when we did one-on-one yeah, but you met with me did that kind of ease some of that like scaredness and intimidation that you had in the gym yeah it did so you felt a little better mm-hmm. felt more, more comfortable yeah and then okay this might be a hard question but how in what way like what did I do that made you feel more comfortable in the gym and just with talking to me question <laughs> <laughs> this was a long time ago too but I'm yes, just curious like what what if, what is it about me that made you like a little bit more comfortable you're just easy going yeah who's easy. going to talk, easy talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah really easy mm-hmm. probably yeah and I feel like I had by that point like I'd been anytime for a while I had a good like good groove going I learned a lot about like building relationships and talking to people and when I truly believe someone needs something it's easy for me to talk about so for me I have learned because of you like I I feel like because of you I have learned how okay this is only one one person but I've had <laughs> other people who are just starting from like ground zero. So I have learned from Kayla and other people how to effectively train someone. And I'm sure I, I, I'm still learning. It's like, I know everything, but there's things that I did that worked when you did it. Yeah. And also you follow the plan to a T. <laughs> yep, so that was, that was awesome. And then, um, so we started the one-on-one. Oh yeah. Okay. So for me, I feel like it's, uh, it helps me to be able to train someone. And I have found my love for training people who are starting at ground zero, like very beginning. I love training people who are more advanced to you like you are now. But so when we started training, what fears did you have when you started with one-on-one training? Not just the gym now, but like the training. Not being able to do the workouts that you would show me how to do. And then I would give up to, if I was going to give up too easily on the exercises. You proved yourself wrong for both of those. And was this really going to help me at all? Oh, <laughs> and look at you now. I know. <laughs> was this going to really help? And you, if, but here's the deal. You would not have known if you didn't try. Mm-hmm. Like you invested. It was an investment. It's not like it was a $5 training, like $5 a month, but you invested your time, your money, and you tried it. And uh, holy cow. Yep. <laughs> You made a lot of progress. Yes. Okay. So the, the workouts, did you have any expectation at all, at all about what the one-on-one would be like? No. No. Yeah. Because you haven't been doing never training no. before. 
So yeah, I mean, I think we basically worked on like movement patterns and um, just like slow progressions of everything. And it was, I remember when you first got down the hip hinge, I was jumping up and down. I yelled a little bit in the gym. Yes, you did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I had no problem doing that to them multiple times. But yeah, it was so exciting. Like that's the coolest thing for me. It's because especially with the hip hinge, it's so hard for people to connect that movement like properly to get their back flat, push their hips back. But then when someone gets it, it's just, oh, it's so satisfying to me. <laughs> yeah. Over time, you you learned a lot. You progressed in your form. So many things. I, I like just so many things, people. Is there anything from the one-on-one -on -one that has stood out to you? Like either some, like an accomplishment that you were super proud of, whether like it was in the gym with a specific movement or exercise or outside of the gym like for one-on-one -on -one specifically you think that stands out probably my comfort zone yes we will talk <laughs> about that we will come back to that comfort zone yes for sure and uh, I remember you were very shy it was like I I, I feel like I'm pretty good at keeping a conversation and talking to people um, and it was a challenge for me to, I had to keep, like, I like to talk to my clients while we're training, not necessarily while, while they're performing the lift because they got to concentrate, but like in between sets, like during the rest time, just getting to know you, asking you a bunch of questions and it, like, yeah, it was kind of hard sometimes. It was like pulling teeth, yes, <laughs> <laughs> but like fast forward, you are so, in, this is just in one way of your comfort zone. I feel like you're just um not as shy I mean that's just with me like you're we've like built this relationship it's like you know so it's maybe a little bit easier but so okay so we'll, we'll come back to that too so tell me more about like when we then transitioned into the small group training and the group training what was your experience with that so you we were doing one-on-one -on -one, and then now you're working out with either one two people or potentially like five six people how was that for you? It was really different. Really different, yes. Because with and, all the people. Yeah. It was, I got to meet new people each day mm -hmm. by being in the classes. Yeah. Not being as shy. Yeah, I feel like because of the groups, that also helped you to not be as shy because people would talk to you or like you were just, it, you were working out with other people. So um, just like naturally, you meet new people and you're in this other, like a whole new community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It wasn't bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was really, and you, you had a lot more progression too, even from that. So in general with training, like not specific to one-on-one -on -one or group, but like what has been some of your biggest takeaways, learning lessons, and this like biggest takeaways, this can be like in the gym or lifestyle, nutrition, like just tell me in your mind, I want to know I've done a lot of talking. Yes. I want you to tell the audience what <laughs> has been, what's been the most change in your life? Like what has changed internally, externally, all the things? My mindset has changed a lot. How so? Well, I don't say I can't do something because I used to always say that mm -hmm. when I did one-on-one. -on -one. And then when I get on the scale... Uh, the number doesn't matter to me nice. at all. Say, okay, talk a little bit more about that. So like before training, before the gym, what was your mindset with the scale? Just seeing it and always changing, going up and down. And you just wanted it to go down. Down, yes. Mm -hmm. And then when I started doing the classes or whatnot, I noticed that in my mind, it doesn't matter. At least you're getting the exercise in. Yeah. And then I think that like, what about when we have the in-body? Like then you know, like what's muscle, body fat, yeah. things like that. That's nice to know. Mm -hmm. Not nor worry about the number ever. And what other ways was your mindset when you first started? Like before you started training, what other things in your mindset has changed? What about, I remember one time you said, this was at one of our assessments, I think, but because you were drinking more water, that helped you to, I don't know, I don't remember exactly. You've tried more foods too. You're, you're a pretty picky eater. Yes, and uh, 
you've tried other foods and stuff. What about, I feel like also one time you mentioned how I never drink, used to drink water and I drink water every day. Oh, okay. Yeah. You, oh, that's what it was. Yeah. You never drank water. No, never and it's it. okay. How is that different? Like, do you feel different or like what's changed from not drinking water to drinking water? Just feels better drinking the water than mm-hmm. drinking like pop and stuff that I used to drink. So it also helped you to drink less pop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 And then do you, was there ever a point where you went to drinking? Do you drink pop anymore? I mean, every now and then or? It's my goal not to this year. So it's been Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, <laughs> high five. Nice. So before that, before you made that goal, when you did drink pop, but you were drinking more water and you just decided, okay, I'm gonna have a pop today. Mm-hmm. How did it feel? Was it like, good? was it as good as what you remembered it? No, not really. No. What about with food? Cause I remember, did you, did you eat? Like, how did you eat before this versus after like now or like after you started training? Well, you used to just make like the processed food, like the easy foods. Now I actually like, what do you mean by processed food and easy foods? Well, like the frozen foods, like Okay. Pizza, pizza rolls and like that stuff. Mm-hmm. And now I'm actually trying to start making meals. Was it because you just didn't know how to eat, what to eat, that yeah. like, okay. What's healthy and what's not healthy. Was there ever a time when you're like, wow, I feel better eating this stuff versus the pizza and pizza rolls and like, what, how has that been different? I haven't noticed much of how I feel, but I can just tell it's, in my mind, it's better than the processed food, Mm -hmm. the frozen foods and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So back to biggest takeaways. What else? Tell us more. Like what, what has changed in your everyday life because you've started working out because you made that decision to invest in yourself? Well, like we keep saying, I'm not as shy as I was. Yeah. I'm more talkative and outgoing. Yeah. Around people. So like, okay. So more, not as shy, what about confidence? Like just confidence in the gym and confidence in your everyday life. And more confidence going in the gym. Before I would just go like, if I had to work out by myself, I would just go in like a little spot and mm-hmm. like hide from everyone. But now I'm like, I just go wherever I have to. And you record <laughs> videos. I know. I don't even like to do that still. Sometimes I do, but like it, like you will, you just prep up a video. There'll be a couple people in the background. Like maybe look over a little, like, you don't give a shit. You just do it, which I think is awesome. So confidence, mindset has changed. Anything else? Mm-hmm. My posture. Oh, there we go. I totally forgot about that. Yes. So <laughs> when I, I remember this was, I think before you and I even met it, for that, like, co- like first initial coaching session, or maybe it was in between you deciding if you wanted one-on-one. I remember this very vividly because I just have never, so you were on the elliptical and I remember just like walking and looking over, seeing you and your posture, like you just was, your shoulders were rounded forward a lot. And I think that just comes with like being shy. Like we're always, you're just like, kind of like this, Mm -hmm. you know, so your, your, uh, shoulders were forward. Like I just hadn't, I remember telling Heather too, like, holy cow, her posture, like I've never seen that before. Mm -hmm. And I just remember thinking, I just want to help her so bad. I just want to. And maybe at that point we had met yeah, and talked, but yeah. So how, tell me more in your mind, like what that experience like has been and how it feels to have well, it feels better posture. Better. posture. It yeah. Feels a lot better. And that probably comes with since you're more confident too. You're just yeah. more like that, that. And then I did the exercises every time after my workouts that you made me do. Yep. Till this day, basically. Yes. Like very, you were very consistent. Every time you came to the gym, it was either before or after, I think probably after your workout, there was like four things I had you do for your posture to work on it. And it got tremendously better, mm-hmm. but consistency is like what helps that. Yes, it does. And I think like just, you weren't just doing them just to do it, but like you were actually like thinking about what you were doing. Yeah. yeah. It was nice. Nice to have them mm-hmm. straight. Oh, well, I think they're straight now. <laughs> yeah. A lot better. Anything else with the biggest takeaway things you've learned didn't really really learn this but I ran my five I ran five five k's and won a five mile run heck yeah <laughs> that's an accomplishment and tough mother really tough mother and I'll be doing a Spartan race and mm-hmm. 
So that's pretty huge too, because you wouldn't have done that. It was kind of a goal after you went to the gym. You just said, I'm going to do 5K someday. How did it feel having a coach slash trainer with you, showing you what to do, telling you what to do, like me asking you questions of like where you feel it? Like, what is your experience instead of you working out on your own? How did it feel having that person, me right there? It was nice knowing like if I was doing it wrong, if I was doing it right the right way. And then you'd, you would always ask like, where would you feel it the most? And then if I stay there and if it's not right, you would tell me. Mm -hmm. and then I'd redo it again. And then I'd actually feel it in like my arms or something. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you would be where you are today if you didn't get a, get a trainer? No, Definitely I don't think so. so. No. no. Or would it just taking you longer? Like, yeah, probably. It's kind of like um, growing a business. You can grow slow and do it yourself, or you can get a coach and help you and uh, grow faster or a program or whatever, which is like the stages that I'm in right now. But <laughs> that's, that's why I think like thought of that. But it's true. Like, I think you can go on Google, you can learn stuff. You can look at videos, there's free shit everywhere. Like YouTube has endless amounts of stuff, but there is just something different when you have that person seeing you in real time, seeing your form, fixing your form if need be, asking the right questions to know if you're using the right muscle groups or not, especially when you're just getting started. Like right now I'm doing virtual coaching, so I'm not there with them, but I still believe that in person is like ultimate. I think you can, you can, you know, be successful either way, but, and now that I, we've worked together, we, we, we can make it work. So, but also I want to ask about that. How did having that accountability, I guess, how did it help your accountability? Do you feel like you were more accountable or uh, how did it help with that? It was more accountable because I knew I had to go to the classes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you had to go, you had to go to our session. Anything else you want to say about like having just like the, like if someone's listening and they're in your, Ooh, okay. <laughs> if someone, this is where you answer this right now. And I wait to that. And if someone's listening, they are where you are at when you first started what would you tell them? Kind of like, what would you tell yourself? Or um, like, what's the biggest piece of advice you would give to that person listening? Mm -hmm. If you don't know what to do at the gym, try finding a personal trainer because it helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also I think it's big that you were scared and shy, but you did it anyways. And now like you got into, you went out of that comfort zone and it was uncomfortable. But the only way, like I've said before, like the only way to get past that fear and that like being scared is just to do it, even though you're scared, we just do it. And then it'll get less and less scary. Yep. That's true. Yeah. Do you feel like looking back, you can kind of see like how it, the fear like kind of diminished over time? Yeah, I definitely can. That's yes. pretty cool. Why do you continue to have me as your coach? Because... It's nice knowing you go to the gym without having to worry about making up a workout every mm -hmm. day. Yeah. Like, then, don't got to worry about it. You just go and do it. Yeah. Also keeps me accountable for it. And they have weekly check-ins. Yeah. So the weekly <laughs> check-ins help? How do, yeah. Tell me more about how those help you. Just having someone to still communicate with. Even yeah. If it's not in person. Right. Yeah. So you like that better than if I were to just have, like, just give you the workout and then that's it. Like yeah. you, you look forward to being able to, it's just like that constant communication mm -hmm. and uh, like having that day where we talk about how the week went. Yep. Yeah. I like that a lot. Good. Good. Anything else you want to say? I don't think so. And I think you, like, since you started not knowing what to do, but like, the, but like now fast forward, like a few years later, you are doing what you're doing. You were, and maybe you were in your head, but to me, you were super patient. Like you just, you just kept going. You were consistent. Like you had some, what, do you remember, is there a time when you kind of had like a down moment or when you felt like it wasn't working or you were just like frustrated with yourself or like anything? Probably, I don't know what month or what, when it was, but when, we did the body scan mm -hmm. and I lost like a ton of weight. Mm -hmm. And then I did the next like time and my weight went back up. Weight? Like your scale weight? Yeah, my scale weight okay. went up. So that was probably like my lowest because like, then it just kind of just stayed. Oh, you know, I, I like see. dropped like a lot that one time and then it went like. 
Cause that yeah. was towards the beginning. Beginning. Yeah. Yes. That's a good point because when you first start a lot of like, if you are consistent, you're doing the things like you might see your weight drop down. But I think also I remember your muscle, more importantly, your muscle went up mm-hmm. and your body fat went down. Cause it, like you weren't overweight, but I think that you had said that you wanted to lose some body fat and gain some more muscle. Plus like with lifting weights, like you want to get stronger. So your weight went up, yes, but your muscle went up and your body fat went down. Mm-hmm. And that was like a pretty drastic, it wasn't in an unhealthy amount of time, I don't think, yeah. by any means, but that's, that's pretty normal. I mean, some people that happens, some people it doesn't, but when it hit that, I remember you t- like talking to me about that, how you felt just kind of like discouraged a little bit because you felt like it wasn't really going anywhere. Yeah, it was the same. But you were learning so many movements and new lifts and you were changing the way that you're eating learning how to eat different not how to eat but learning like how to meal prep you tried the factor you tried HelloFresh. yep you like you just have been experimenting and being consistent did you do an in-body before we started one-on-one uh for this i did one right yeah i did okay good yeah, <laughs> I yeah, did. It was it was one right before, and then I asked if I should keep doing it. Oh, and, oh, and said, I said, wait, just wait. So I haven't done this. <laughs> yeah, because I, I mean, you were doing it like every eight weeks, which is fine. But I think just taking a little break from it, I just wanted you to focus on your workouts, and I knew that you were. It was just kind of like stagnant, mm-hmm. which, like, you've been doing this a long time, so it, it's it, that's what's gonna happen. Yeah. You are like you might have that jump, but then it'll be kind of stagnant unless you like find really like fine tune your eat like I feel like it's all nutrition really I mean yes effective programming but also nutrition Mm -hmm. you try doing macros like we just we have been experimenting yeah so so then I would I feel like I just would try and help you like get your mind off of that and just focus on those things because you were doing a lot of good stuff yeah and still making progress just not it just wasn't as you know a ton of muscle gain and a lot of fat and you don't have like a bunch of fat foods anyways you know like you're at a healthy yeah body fat percentage and stuff so yeah. Any other challenges that you've overcome that you can think of? Um, I think I feel like we touched on all of them though, but you can you think of any? No. Okay. I don't think so. I forgot to add this in here. So you can take a moment to think about it if you need. The question I always ask my guests. <laughs> what does it mean to you when you hear flow at the grow? Take a moment. Probably. Life is like a roller coaster. You go your ups and downs. That's how, like, that's what I think. Of I it. like that. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, re- life is like a roller coaster. The ups, the downs, in betweens. In betweens. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Yep. You're Super welcome. pumped. If anyone wants to uh, connect with Kayla, uh, maybe you have questions. Maybe you are in the same position that she was in when she first started and you just want to get some advice or just have someone who can relate to you reach out to her on instagram so it's at kayla johnson underscore 23 kayla m johnson underscore. oh shoot okay (laughs) kayla at okay scratch all of that at kayla m johnson underscore 23 there you go yes (laughs) that'll be linked to the show notes too but um yeah so yeah, thanks for having thanks for being yeah. on this. Finally, we've been talking about doing it for a while. Yeah, you're welcome.